السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها المسلمون to the long time listener and first time visitor we welcome you to this episode now without further ado let's get into it الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah We have to take advantage of what we have we cannot allow ourselves to be neglectful and thus squander it. But we have to take advantage of it. If we truly want what's good for ourselves, if we truly are those who are the stewards of our own self-interest, then we have to take advantage. We weren't able to finish in the last class because we didn't want to make it longer than what it needed to be unnecessarily, right? So we left it there. So that we can pick it up here, bithnilahi ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in His noble book, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبَ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبَ Allah ta'ala, He says what translated means, And when you have freed yourself, or when you have become free from the collective services, from work, from your occupation, so on and so forth, then stand up and worship Allah. Then stand up for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unto your Lord alone, turn all of your intentions and your hopes and also your invocations. Turn it all to Allah ta'ala alone. So after work, when your work is done, when your toil is done, then stand up and worship Allah ta'ala. Establish the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, before going on, it's important for us to mention, because I don't want anyone to misunderstand. This does not mean that once you get off of work, then you pray your prayers. Once you get off of work, then you establish the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while you are at work, then you're not obliged to worship Allah ta'ala. You're not obliged to stop your day and to make your salat. It does not mean that. How do we know this? Allah Ta'ala, He says in His noble book, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Allah Ta'ala, He says, and verily the salat has been enjoined on the believers at fixed times. So the salat is at fixed times. So if you're at work and dhuhr comes in, then you have to pray dhuhr. If you're at work and it's the time of Asr, then you have to pray Asr, so on and so forth. If you work the second shift and you're at work and it's Asr al-Maghrib, so, then you pray Asr al-Maghrib and Isha perhaps as well. Naam. So whenever the Salat comes in, when you're at work, then you pray it. Now, there's some individuals, I don't know where they get this from. I don't know. Someone said this to them. They got a wrong fatwa. I don't know. I don't know where they get it from. But I know of individuals and have heard of individuals who, when they're at work, they don't pray. And they will delay these prayers outside of their fixed times until they got home. And then once they got home in the evening, then they will pray three prayers at once, right? So when they got home, it being the time of Maghrib, so you'll find they'll pray Maghrib, Dhuhr, and Asr, all in the time of Maghrib, right? Some individuals who they may get home in the time of Isha, so now they're praying Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, all in the time of Isha, wa'iyadhu billah. No, this is not correct. This is a great sin. Bithillahi ta'ala, this is um, a session, this is a class, an episode, all to itself. Naam. But inshallah ta'ala, we'll, we'll leave that there because we want to concentrate what we want to concentrate on here. And that is, is that what? We really have to take advantage of what we have right now. 
We have to take advantage of what we have right now, and we have to use now for forever. I want you to understand that. We have to use now for forever. Bithnilahi ta'ala, by the end of this, we'll come to see exactly what is meant by that 100%. Let's, let us get back to the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands us that once we have finished up from work, once we have finished up from our occupation, from our toil, so on and so forth, then stand up for the, for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stand up for Allah's worship. Qala Imam al-Kathir, Imam al-Kathir, he mentions in his tafsir, إِذَا فَرَغْتَ مِنْ أُمُورِ الدُّنْيَا Meaning that once you have finished off from the affairs of the world, once you have finished off from worldly affairs, you're done with these worldly affairs, فَوْصُرْ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ Then stand up and establish the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقُمْ إِلَيْهَا And establish it, stand up for it. نَشِيطًا فَارِغَ الْبَالِ Naam, with full energy, فَارِغَ الْبَالِ with your mind not occupied by what's going on uh, from the worldly affairs. وَأَخْلِصْ لِرَبِّكْ And make sincere and pure for your Lord your niyyah, your intention and your raghba and your hope. So put your hope solely in Allah Ta'ala and that which is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Put your intention, make your attention sincere for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Well, of course, upon the what? The sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, so when we look at this verse right here, we see the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has put upon his slaves. This is the balance now that we all have to be upon to go to the extreme in one way, one direction or the other. This is not from the deen of Islam. The deen of Islam is in the middle. OK, so we're not called in the deen is not from the religion to be monks. So that we worship all day. We just worship all day. Because there are and there is a worldly aspect to our life. Meaning that there are certain worldly things that we need. So we need food. We need drink. We need shelter. So on and so forth. Right? And these things require what? It requires that an individual works. Allah Ta'ala, He has put it upon us that we take the asbab. That we take the, the means. And taking the means is from the deen. Taking the means is what Allah Ta'ala, he has mandated upon us. So we have to take the means. So an individual, he cannot sit on his hands all day or cannot worship all day and then they do not work. This will be an extreme. Likewise, the individual who is a workaholic and all they do is they, is, is they work and work and work and they don't worship Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, then this is the epitome of foolishness because we have not been put here in this dunya just to, just to get money. We have not been put here in this dunya just to chase after commodities. But we've been put here in this dunya to utilize our time here and that which is there to what? That which is here to establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been put here to establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to establish tawheed, to prepare for our what? For our hereafter. So we have to use now for forever. You understand? In any event, if an individual were to worship all day long, right? And they didn't work, especially if it was a man, especially if it was a man, then he will get more than a side eye from his family. Because not only will their bills not be paid, not only would they not have anything in their pantry and in their cupboard, not only would their refrigerator be empty, but then they'll be forced to resort to begging others to take care of these needs until it could come to the extent where they will have to beg for some grains of rice, where they will have to stand on the corner with signs that say family of four in need of food or whatever, family of five in need of food or whatever. You understand? Now, of course, we look at this, we say, no, this is not the dean doesn't you know, uh, um, put it upon a person to do this. This is not from the dean. This is not from the religion that a person be like this and take it to this extent. But they say, oh, but I'm worshiping Allah Ta'ala all day. No, we tell him, you need to get a job. You need to take care of your family. Ma'am, this is not acceptable. But on the other end, like, like mentioned, a person that they just work 24-7, we say, no, this is also an extreme. You're not preparing for your hereafter. You're not worshiping Allah Ta'ala. You're not establishing the, 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 the main fact why you've been created. And that is to what? It's to worship Allah Ta'ala and establish the Tawheed. This is why you've been created. You have not been created to work this job, but you've been created to what? To establish Tawheed. 
and you take the earnings and whatever you get from this job and then you spend in the way of Allah Ta'ala, establish that which Allah Ta'ala has ordered you to establish, so on and so forth. Now, this is the purpose of the job. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So we see the balance here. So once you have finished with your work, once you have finished with your toy, once you have finished with your occupation, then establish the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this sound like to you? What does this sound like? This sounds like what? It sounds like that free time we were talking about. Now that you're not preoccupied by these other things. Now that you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with nothing on your mind. Because what you need to take care of is already taken care of. Now, those tasks that are linked to your toil, they're already done. You, you, you finish them. So now you have 100% an opportunity to put 100% of your concentration upon the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That makes sense? And this reminds us of what? Of the hadith, the hadith of Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, that has been collected in Al-Bukhari, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ni'matan maghbunun fihima kathirun min al-nas, al-sihha wal-faragh, that there are two bounties that most of mankind squander. They don't take advantage of them. And they are health and they are spare time. So when we have that spare time, right, then we have to make sure that we're utilizing that spare time in a manner in which will help us and benefit us in the hereafter. That we don't squander that spare time, but we use it to benefit us. Now, and everything could become a benefit for you if your intention is correct. Meaning that if an individual has some spare time and then they take that spare time or a portion of that spare time to take a nap. But they take the nap with the intention so that they could rejuvenate themselves for what? To worship more and to worship better and to be more efficient at whatever it is that they're doing, then this is worship and they'll be rewarded for it due to their what? Intention. Now, they'll be rewarded for it due to their intention. So we have to make sure that we're utilizing our spare time in the most effective manner to what? So that we may benefit. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands us to prepare for our next life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the reality of those who squander their life. They don't worship Allah. They don't utilize their free time in the obedience of Allah. But those who they didn't worship Allah, those who were neglectful, those who they committed sins and transgressions. This is how they lived their life. Their life was based upon sin and transgression. These individuals, they will be those who will be sorry on the day of judgment. Those who did not put forth for their hereafter will be sorry on the day of judgment. Allah Ta'ala, he tells us what will be their statement. They will say what? Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. Woe unto me. I didn't put anything forward for my Hayati for my life, ma'am. I didn't put anything forward for my life. And what are they describing as life? Are they describing as life this period of time right here in the dunya? Or are they describing as real life that period of time after their death? You understand? They talk, they talk about on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment is what? After a person has been dead. In their grave, resurrected. Now, now, because there are going to be two options either heaven or hell, Jannah or Nar. That's it. There's no third option. Either a person is going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. Those who prepared, they're going to go to heaven. Those who did not prepare, they're going to, they're going to go to hell. Allah Ta'ala, in encouraging us by showing us what will be the reward for those who did prepare, Allah Ta'ala, He says, Kulu washrabu hani'a, eat and drink merrily in full satisfaction. Bima kuntum ta'maloon, because of what you used to do, because of what you did before. Because of the work you did before, eat and drink merrily. 
I want us all to really understand, eat and drink merrily. Why? Because of you being from this family or that family, because of you being from this race or that race, because of you being this skin color, that skin color, because of you being, your, no, no, because of what you did before. Because before in the dunya, what do you do? You believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You established the tawheed, the true monotheism. You followed his prophets and his messengers. You believed in his prophets and his messengers. You submitted yourself as a Muslim. You followed the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You established the obligations. You stayed away from the sins. When you slipped up and fell into a sin, you asked, you asked Allah ta'ala to forgive you. You made repentance unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on and so forth. You live your life as a believer, as a Muslim, as a believer, one who submits themselves unto Allah Ta'ala, who believes in Allah correctly. You prepared. You fasted in Ramadan. You prayed your five daily prayers. You paid your charity. You paid zakat. Then, for those who had the ability, you made hajj and umrah. So on and so forth. You put forth an effort. So because of that work that you did before in dunya, now in Akhirah, Kulu wa shrabu hanea. Eat and drink in full satisfaction. You put forth the work already in dunya. Now in the Akhirah is when you get paid. Now, and as we know, no one will enter into Jannah based upon what they did. Because Jannah is so expensive. None of us could afford it. We only enter into Jannah based upon the bounty in which Allah Ta'ala He bestows upon us. Now, and due to your effort, due to your effort, Allah Ta'ala, He would raise your rank in Jannah due to what you, you did and how hard you worked. So the harder you work for the Jannah, the harder you put forth righteous good deeds, the more you pray, the more you fast, the more you give charity, the more you call to good and forbid evil and, and, and from the righteous good deeds, the more you smile in the face of your brothers. And if you're smiling in the face of your brothers, this is what? This is Sadaqah. Naam. The more you do righteousness, the higher your level is going to be in Jannah. Okay? So we have to work for it. Brothers, sisters, things are not free. Brothers and sisters, things are not free. L listen, listen. Here in this world, and let's talk about this world and the lowliness of this world. Okay? Here in this world, Nothing is free. Nothing is free. Somebody is paying for it. Somebody's paying for it. I'll give you an example. Depending upon how you are viewing this content, right? Be it on YouTube or be it on in the, the podcast, the audio of it. The bottom line is somebody's paying for it. Somebody's paying for it. It's not free. So let's take YouTube for an example because it's a clear example. YouTube is not free because either you are paying for a product or you are the product. I'm going to say that again. Either you are paying for a product or you are the product, brother, sister. You're the product. Okay. For those who they come on YouTube and they watch it for free, they don't, they don't subscribe to it, have, have a subscription for it, but they pay monthly, what do you see? You see ads. You see ads. Because these companies, those people who buy these ads, they're the ones who are paying for your viewer experience. They're the ones paying. That's how you're watching it for free. Because what? Because you are the product. You are the product. And based upon how many of your eyeballs will touch that screen, but now that's how much they can charge for what? For the ads. That's why you see the ads. You understand? But for those who have a subscription for YouTube and you pay monthly for YouTube, you don't see any ads. Why? Because you purchased the product. So you don't see any ads because you paid for it. But if you're getting it for free, that's because you are the product. You're not paying, but somebody else is paying. And you got to sit there and watch them ads. Make sense? Right. Nothing is... <laughs> Nothing is free. So for those of us who understand this reality that nothing is free and you got to work for what you want. If this applies to the dunya, then what do you think about Jannah? 
What do you think about Jannah that is better than this world? What do you think about Jannah that we can never conceptualize the Jannah? Not here. No. Because it is so outstanding. It is so luxurious and plush that it's beyond our understanding. We understand the words of what will be there. They'll be there, Roman, right? Pomegranate and things like that. So we understand what a pomegranate is, but it's no comparison between a pomegranate there and between a pomegranate here. No comparison. The name is the same. They mentioned the names are the same. That's about it. Just the names are the same. Now, but the reality, and even some of the, they mentioned the names are the same, the, 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 the general shape and color may be the same, but the reality, how it tastes, smells, so on and so forth, beyond our comprehension. Beyond our comprehension. That's how good it is. That's how good it is. So if a pomegranate here in this world is not free, I have to pay for it, and it is low quality compared to that of the Jannah, do you think that the one in Jannah is free? Of course not. Of course it's not free. We have to put forth effort. We have to put forth effort. And that's why we have to use now for forever. We have to use right now for our forever. We can't afford to allow people to waste our time. We can't afford to allow people to distract us. So I caution you, do not allow people to distract you. Even people that may come to you in the form of religious people. Don't let them distract you. Don't allow individuals to force upon you their narrative by having you busy and occupied by these things that don't benefit you. Do you understand what I'm saying? How often do we have individuals, they will come to us and they will say, you have to take a stance against this particular person because we said so. And you don't know who that person is or anything like that. But they come into you and they got a bish, they got a, a hutra, they, you know, they look righteous, you know, big beard, high thou, whatever the case is, look righteous. But they're telling you to take a stance against a person you don't even know exists. They're telling you to dwell yourself into an issue that you don't fully comprehend. And even if you did, there's no takeaway for you. There's no big benefit for you and your life. It's not giving you an overwhelming benefit, nor is it preventing from you something that will harm you. I mean, let's, let's be real about it. It's not preventing from you something that would, that would actually harm you, but they're telling you, no, you have to be busy this and learn about this, learn about that. But then there are things that you shouldn't learn about and, and you're, you're totally ignorant about them. There are things that have a, a, you know, a, a really good value in it for you, but you, you leave these things alone because you're chasing after these things that this person is telling you that, oh no, you must know, okay? Don't don't allow don't let don't let people busy you like that. Don't allow people to play you and to distract you from that which really benefits you. Likewise, you yourself don't allow yourself to be your biggest hindrance between you and that which will benefit you. So you have to put forth effort in a manner that will be one sustainable, bithnilahi ta'ala, na'am. And likewise, in a manner that it makes sense. You don't go so far, you burn yourself out, then that's it. Now you, now you sit, you don't do anything. But you do that in a, in, in a most efficient manner for sustained benefit. Because we have to strive and strive and strive and strive. And we strive and strive and strive until, 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 until we die. That's it. We strive and strive and strive until we die. Not, not before. Not until we reach a certain age. No, until we die. Because we want to get the most out of our life. So we have to take advantage of our time. Because time is not money. Time is life. Time is life. Because you've only been given a certain period of time that you're going to be here. Now, whatever that allocation was, when those moments are gone, you are gone. So time is what? Is life because your time, let's say you, for example, you're only meant to be here for 87 years, six months, five days, 
three hours. For example, that's, that's how long you're going to be here. Not a second more, not a second less. Once that time is up, once you have lived all those moments or your moments are done, you are done, gone, dead. That's it. So that time that you've been given, that it is somebody is what? That's your life. So time is life. Don't waste it. Don't allow it to be wasted. Okay? The Prophet as it comes in a hadith and Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu fima rawahu tiramadi fi sunanihi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Man khafa ad leja wa man ad leja balag al manzi ala inna sil'atullah ghaliya ala inna sil'atullah al jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that whoever fears, whoever fears, Reaching where they need to reach, then let them set out at nighttime. Now, if you fear that you're not going to get there in time, for example, if you fear you're not going to get there in time, then don't wait till the morning to, to, to set out on your journey. If you fear you're not going to make it, leave at night. Leave at night. Because whoever leaves in the night, then he's going to make it to his destination. He's going to make it to his destination. Whoever leaves out early, in other words, if you fear... Making it to your destination, leave early. If you leave early, you're going to make it there. Because what are you doing? You're putting forth the effort. You're putting forth what? Effort. At times, going above and beyond, as they say. Meaning you're putting forth double time. Right? You're bringing forth the voluntary. Not just the obligatory, but now you're going to do the voluntary as well. That makes sense? If you do that, then you will make it to your destination. Because verily, that which is with Allah is expensive. Mm, it's expensive. That which is with Allah is expensive. And verily, that which is with Allah is the Jannah. Heaven. Heaven is expensive. You want heaven? You have to work for it, brother. You have to work for it, sister. It's not free. You're not going to get it just because you have to put forth work. And that work is where? It's here and it's now. So don't waste your time. Don't waste your, your, your spare time and your free time. Don't waste it. Take advantage of it. When you're done with your work and your occupation, then worship Allah Ta'ala and establish the ibadah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, making your intentions and your hopes and your dua, your supplications, Sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beg Allah ta'ala. Work hard and beg Allah ta'ala. Be patient and beg Allah ta'ala. Put forth righteous good deeds and beg Allah ta'ala. Beg Allah, beg Allah, beg Allah. If you want to be successful, you have to put forth the work. Because nothing in this world is free. Because nothing is free. Inshallah ta'ala. نكتفي بهذا القدر والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا إلى اللقاء استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته